Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Steve, and I'm developer of Alliance of the Sacred Sons. So what we're going to be doing right now is what's called a how to play as opposed to a let's play. Uh, this is a 602 build. It's a little bit more advanced than what people have in their hands, so a few things have changed. Uh, but you'll be able to get your hands on this build fairly soon. So what I'm going to be concentrating on is not necessarily why I'm doing things, just how to do them. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start a new reign. And we'll go ahead and do a large quadrant. We'll make it about 18,500 light years. Now you can make it anywhere from 12 to 20. Of course, it depends on the size as well. Larger, you'll have more planets, you'll have more systems. Um, you can select other civilizations, not in this build, but uh, you can select up to eight normally. We're going to choose our culture next. And there are six primary cultures that you can choose from. Each of them have different primary ideas and deviances, um, also houses that they are associated with. So you'll tend to want to choose a culture based on your gameplay. Uh, Spartak tends to be very warlike, while traditionalist tends to be very religious, and the American tends to be very practical. It's also the easiest to start with. So we'll go ahead and the American, go ahead and enter our house. We'll call ourselves Harakon. No, just kidding. Hawkstorm. And these don't really matter at this point. I uh, just like the colors. Eventually you'll be able to create your own banner. Uh, you can be either male or female. We'll go male. We'll call ourselves Steve. We're always Emperor Steve. Hawkstorm is your house, the first. You will have the option to change this. And then, of course, you can change this one. I like this guy. He tends to look kind of evil. Go ahead and click your Empire Awaits. And after a few moments, after the game loads and generates the quadrant, the game will start. Now, I'm going to play roughly one year uh, just to kind of show you how things progress and show you different systems. But once again, this is not, I'm not going to explain too much about why I'm doing things. It's more about how to do them. Uh, in future Let's Plays, I will go into a little bit more detail about strategy, especially when a few more concepts like Intel, which is very important when the character AI has been added, and Inquisitors, and uh, things like that. So it generally takes about 45 seconds to a minute on an average computer to generate, especially on a larger quadrant. On smaller, it doesn't take nearly as long. Uh, when you start adding civilizations, of course, that can add to it as well. So it should be coming up here very quickly, here in the next 10 seconds, and then we'll go ahead and start. We're going to do an overview of the UI, of the main UI, and then we're going to show you how to do several common functions that you will use quite a bit as Emperor, especially in build 0.6. So without further ado, this should be the last turn that's being generated. So we'll go ahead and show here momentarily. Very excited about the release. Uh, very excited to see it out there and people playing it. So hopefully this will bring a little bit more clarity to what you're doing. Okay, so we have over here, so let's start. Uh, this is your main overview. You can click on it. Right now it will give you the planets that you own and that are unowned. So this is handy for when you are looking for planets to colonize. Uh, if you click on a planet that you own, say Bounty, it will actually take you directly to the system. Now the stars, by the way, are a little messed up. That's not obviously how they're going to look in the new build. Um, when I moved over to the new version of Unity, my uh, space texture program got a little messed up. So it's not terribly distracting, but just an FYI. That's why some of the stars look a little funky. Anyway, let's go back. This is your houses overview when you click on it shows you your five great houses. Um, now I'm going to add our, the uh, your power will be down here so you'll be able to see kind of where you compare. But you can click on different houses. Uh, you can see your relationship to them. You can see their tradition levels. You can see what their specialty is and what type of culture they are. A little bit of internet history here. Uh, and you can see the relationships with other houses. Here's their house leader. You can click straight on and go to talk to him directly. Um, so that's that. You can right click to get out. Up here is your popular support. This is your power. This is how many action points you have. This determines how many things you can do. This is where you're at currently. You can, not in this build, but you will shortly be able to move to different locations in your empire. This is how much energy you have uh, reserves for the empire, how many basic materials, 
heavy materials, and rare materials. These four items are what are used along with money and ADM to create projects. This is your project bar over here. Now we don't have any active projects. If we did, you would see how long they have to go approximately um, by a bar, and you would see how, what is currently being done. This is your next turn button. These are your different what are called command modes. These uh, change what are on the map. Right now we're in political command mode, so it lets us see who the province governor is, how many ADM come from each system. If we were to change to overview, not a whole lot has changed. If we go to military, it shows us the logistical ranges, and it takes away the, the governors. If we change to economic, uh, it will show us our trade hubs and our trade fleets. If we go to political, it's what it is earlier. If you zoom in enough into a system, it shows each individual planet, and it shows their scan level, bio, basic, heavy, and rare ratings for each planet. And demographic command mode primarily shows the popular support for each system and the population and the migration. So you can see those little numbers there. All right, so let's go ahead. This is your chain of command. It will change depending on where you're at. This here is, as I go on to each one, uh, this is your economic prime. This is your grand inquisitor, your martial prime. Uh, this is your science prime, although we're missing the icon for it, and your domestic prime. These form your what's called your celestial council, and they are kind of your prime advisors. All right, to zoom in to any system, to zoom in and out, you can use the middle mouse or um, yeah you can use that to move around you can use the arrow keys WASDF or you can move around using the mouse um, zoom to cursor will be implemented soon but is not yet to go to a system a couple of options you can either click on and click a planet here or you can click directly on the system itself so we'll actually go to abiding now this is called the system screen now you see these are the Emperor, Domestic Prime, Provincial Governor, and System Governor. This is what's called the Chain of Command. So uh, for this system, Evie Hitomi is who runs this system. Here you have up to five planets that make up the system. And right now we're in Demographic Command mode, so you're going to see different items here depending on what you see. You see the Population Overview here. It shows you the current population to change, the popular support, how many people have immigrated, how many people have emigrated, and the net change. Here you see population, population change, viceroy, top cultures, the top two cultures for this planet, and then religions are not implemented yet. That will actually be removed for the next build just to prevent uh, any issues. Down here is the system display. It shows you what type of star what province is located in, the empire or, or civilization that it belongs to, and which house currently holds it. This is the Celestial Empire crest. This is House Hawkstorm. Again, this will change too. This is a placeholder art. If I change the command mode, if I change to economic command mode, you will see trade information. You will see trade hub and most import needs. You will see the, uh, 80, the budget of the planet, how much they are making and what's called their average development level, which is basically how advanced a planet is. The higher the ADL, the nicer a planet is to live. You will also see the focus of the planet. In other words, what it's focused on building, which is determined based on their Viceroy, although you can actually change that. You can click on the Viceroy from here. This gives you a little bit of information. This shows the trade hub information. There is no trade hub at either of these planets. This shows you how many merchants are here, and how uh, the skill of the merchants and how many fleets are currently here. Since there are no trade hubs, there are no fleets. Here there are two merchant pops with an average skill of 68. Export goods, um, this needs to be updated. This will show the exported good from this planet since there is no trade hub, nothing is exported. And then the import needs, this is a number from one zero to 100. 100 means a very great need, zero means no need for these materials according to the Viceroy. We look at political command mode. This shows the public order for each planet. This shows the uh, fear level for you, for that planet. This shows the love level. This relates to popular support. Again, shows the Viceroy. Shows the Viceroy fear level, Viceroy uh, love level. Um, this popular figure is not yet implemented. Tensions are not yet implemented. Those will be removed. 
demographic command mode again as we said what goes from here and then our overview mode shows you type of planet bio basic material heavy material rare material energy and any traits of the planet now you can click onto any planet directly oh and here's to create a project so if we wanted to create a project we would first go to the command mode that we want to use so right now if we wanted to scout this system we already know what's here so we don't really need to do that and if we go to economic or political we don't really need to do any of these things but if we wanted to go out and we wanted to scan a different let's say let's see consecration so we want to learn a little bit more about this what we would do is we would go to military mode we would scout the system um, or survey the system which is probably better because we already have a basic idea of what's here so you would want to click on I'm so, ah, sorry you want to survey the system you want to click on it this is the project menu it opens up the first thing you'll want to do is you'll want to collect the houses that you want characters to be part of the project now blue means they are allied green means they are friendly or neutral and red means they are enemies so you tend to only want to pick people that are friends with you now this is the scale planet system province and empire now because nobody owns this system it does not belong to any province so only empire scale will show who is available now if we go to sort by administrator effect the first thing we want to do is find an administrator the reason for that is administrators determine how many contributors can contribute to a project. If you see up here, this is the amount of admin, ADM, required to complete this project. This is the amount of energy, basic materials, heavy materials, and rare materials needed to complete the project from the Empire. As you can see, the Empire has about 17,414 energy. This will cost 3,000 energy, 300, 210, and this will come from the Empire stockpiles. The administrator effect is right here. This is based on how skilled they are at basically running their, uh, their admin. So skill level shows how many contributors they can have, which the more is better because you can have more people as part of the project. Where, and this is better because you have a multiplier. In other words, if someone had 100 admin, if they had an administrator with 217% effect, they would actually have 217 effective admin. So we definitely want to use this person. This is the house leader of Hawkstorm. So if we want to empower the Hawkstorm, we would go ahead, click and drag, and move her over here. So now you see that three uh, spaces have opened up. So now we need to find admin. Now, admin can never be used by an administrator, nor can money. So you want to take that into effect. So next thing we'd probably want to do is look at admin greater than zero and then sort. So we want to see who has the most admin. Now you'll notice these numbers are in red. That means that this particular system is not in, in the chain of command of this character. If this system was in, say, a province, then the province governor's number would be green because they are essentially over that system. You would also see the systems gov system governor's number in green because that would be their system. This system does not belong to anyone, so none of the numbers will be green. When this number is red, that means that because of logistics, it is not in any chain of command, you will have far, far less admin than you would normally. So that's why it's good sometimes to add a project to the empire, I'm sorry, to add a system to a province before you actually try to colonize it or do anything else with it. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to use the system governor. This is another Hawkstorm uh, character, so this is going to give her power. Now she can fund 100% of the project. The project, as you can see, costs 10 billion what are called crowns, and she can do all of it. So her admin is 39. So we're going to go ahead and drag and drop her over here. So you can see now, I can go ahead and execute because I have 100% of the project funded. Now, I have an effective ADM of 84 because, again, it multiplied by the administrator effect. That means it will take about two turns for this project to be completed. If I wanted it to be done faster, I could look at another character and add their admin as well. Now, you see they're also willing to fund 100%. The 
the power that each character gets from this project, because there's sort of a uh, influence uh, with each project, would be plus 30. Now, if I add a second person to it, they're going to split it, because each of them are contributing 50%. You see 200% of 10 billion credits. Well, they're going to split it. Um, they're not going to contribute 100% each, but you, now you see the admin has increased to 161. This is well over the 100 ADM required for the project, so the estimated turns is one turn. So I'm going to go ahead and click Execute. Now you see Survey System is here in the project. So you now see I'll have one AP. It costs one action point to do. So I'm going to go ahead and go out of the system, and I'm going to show you how to talk to a character. So let's go ahead and talk to, actually, let's, let's talk to a Viceroy. So I'll zoom in here. Let's talk to the Viceroy of New Terra. So you see here, you can click onto anybody's portrait and you can reach them directly. It costs one AP to talk to someone if they are on the planet. So the next thing that is important are called actions. This is how you get a character to do different things. Now before, let's go over the character screen. This is how you set a character of interest. This will allow you to filter by this character. It will also allow you to filter when you're selecting for projects and other things. So we'll make him a character of interest. This is the power of this character. Shows their base power plus their uh, achieved power. And this can fluctuate depending on what they do, what holdings they have, projects, etc. This is their administrator skill. Very important. This shows earlier, as you saw in projects, it shows how many slots, but it also shows how effective they are at creating admin from a planet. So as you can see, the base admin is 251. Um, this is good because he has an administrator skill of three. He has 55 billion crowns in well, personal wealth. He is in perfect shape at 189 years old, and he is a machine, which means he's essentially a, a robot. He has 50% um, love from his people. His current assignment is on Nutera. Uh, his culture is Neo-American culture, which is the same as yours. And uh, religion is not yet implemented. You have maximum intel on this character. That means you know as much as you can about him. You can increase intel by spending more time with a character and talking to them. The level will slowly rise. When the intel system is implemented, you will also be able to add Inquisitor squads, uh, and informers. This is the personality matrix. This shows three different types of personality traits, emotions, motives, and talents. Caution, passion, and drive. This is very important when the AI is put in place. It will determine how long that character spend on a project, how quickly they are to change their goal, and how driven they are and determined to continue a goal. Motives, which are piety, empathy, and honor. Piety will be very important when the religion comes into place. For now, piety is important because, as you know, you are the emperor, and you are seen as more or less a god on earth. And so characters whose piety is very high tend to be held in higher regard by their governing populations. Their empathy shows how well they care about the people under them. In this case, this one is abysmal which means that this kind of balances out the piety because even though you regard the emperor as a god, you treat your people very poorly and your, your populace will be unhappy. Honor reflects many things, how likely they are to take a bribe, how likely they are to break with their house rank, how likely they are to do their own thing and keep their word. So you can see this is a low honor. The third part is talents. Charm is important intellect and discretion. Charm is important when especially running a planet or a system because it shows essentially the political. How how political is this character? How much do they care about their people? Do they give good speeches? Do they feel people make people feel good about being there? Intellect is how intelligent they are. They will tend to make better decisions when taking care of their planets. They will tend to pick better plans when determining their goals. Uh, and it also affects a wide variety of things from how much money they get to their admin and it affects so just a wide variety of things. Having a high intellect is generally better. And discretion, when the, in, when the uh, intel system comes, will be more important because there will be a concept called secrets 
where you will be able to learn more about characters and if they're plotting and if they have low discretion uh, you may be able to get them to talk more about what they've heard from other people here are traits there are up to four traits and you can learn more traits as you continue to get intel and you can mouse over there are 40 different traits and you can mouse over them to see kind of what they do uh, most of the help text will tell you generally what they do in game terms these are friendly relationships these are the relationships that a character has that are most friendly and then these are hostile relationships these are relationships that uh, the character is least friendly with now keep in mind that this icon shows I'll have to fix that this icon shows that your relationship to that character not the character's relationship this is a current conversation this shows basically them saying hello they can say anything they like they have a wide variety of conversations you'll want to take a look at what they say sometimes you'll get clues as to how they feel about you these are actions right now there are four action types of actions that are implemented there are friendly actions there are assignment actions that change depending on their assignment whether they're a viceroy or a governor hostile actions and then their house actions depending on what house they belong to I'm not going to go into every single action but this is how you do an action so if I were to want to have this change the um, improve especially economic sector right now uh, this is an admin planet and I want them to change to mines I would click on here you see this uh, interaction I want to change to mines click on confirm the action and you'll find out their result in this case because I have a good relationship with this and he is the same culture as me and the same house he is much more likely to obey alright so we close the screen as you can see that took one AP as well but this is how you initiate actions uh, this here is where they are located this is their planet province system and constellation alright and you right click to get out to right click to get out of any mode you simply right click you can right click out back into things alright so your choices will those are the basics as far as how to get in and out how to build things how to create projects how to do actions and how to move around the map and how to go in with from within the different areas again this is not a let's play I'm not going to go any further this is just a way to show you what some of the main functions are so that you can start to play I will post a let's play soon going into great more detail about why you would do certain things uh, but for now thank you very much hope you've learned something and enjoy Alliance of the Sacred Sons